It started with a psychotic episode, I guess, a, a so-called bad trip. And so this year and a half was full of self-exploration, diving into my mind, my emotions. What happened on that day that caused me to feel these, these feelings that I'm stuck with. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of these Conscious Conversations with me, Brett Moran. Obviously, we've got some coconuts on the table, and we have another amazing guest. Now, this special guest is somebody that I absolutely love talking to on my little adventures when I'm traveling around Copangang. In fact, we actually had a, a beautiful conversation last night, and it was just by random, but we didn't plan to meet each other we wasn't going out for dinner but we bump into each other and we just have these conscious conversations and soon as I did this podcast we set this podcast up I knew that I wanted to have this guest on the podcast because he's just such a beautiful soul and we actually met at a random um, coconut shack where we had one of our first ever conversations and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit in today's podcast anyway Without further ado, let me bring him straight on. His name is Dalton, and he is a life coach, and he helps people go on a journey, a spiritual journey, so they can channel this higher dimension and bring it down into these physical realities to cope and deal with life, which Dalton, I think, is incredible that you do this kind of work, mate, and I really appreciate your time and driving over here today to come and be a guest on our podcast. How's it going, brother? Thanks, bro. I'm, I'm doing great. Nice. I'm super honored to be here and share and connect and, and uh, yeah, and do this. People at home probably can't see what I can see right now, or if you're listening to the podca uh, podcast on iTunes, you definitely can't see what I can see right now. But when you look into your eyes, bro, they're just so deep and so light. And I've probably never said that to you before, but every time we've had our conversations, I'm like, you're so present with people. It's such a beautiful gift, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so our first conversation was when we was having a coconut, like five years ago, maybe four years ago. Yeah, yeah, about four. Four years ago, randomly at a coconut shack on like the corner of the road. <laughs> and I pulled over. Is that the first time we met? I think it was the first or one of the first times we met. I pulled over, got a coconut, and there's this guy with his T-shirt off and tattoos. And we just had such a lovely conversation for ages, didn't we? Yeah. And I think if it's okay, if you don't mind sharing... The first thing that just always rings a bell is that you told me you took a lot of drugs and you had some kind of like psycho, psychotic episodes mm. and then you got yourself back out of it and this is where you are today. Yeah. What on earth happened? All right. Well, well, it's, uh, it's um, where to start really. Uh, and th so much has changed as well. My my perspective and opinion on these things like psychosis and schizophrenia is completely not not what the mainstream calls it anymore. But um, it it started with a a psychotic episode, I guess, a, a so called bad trip, and uh, I was. I was in the wrong environment with the wrong type of people, wrong crowd. Uh, it wasn't so safe, really. It didn't feel safe at all. But uh, long story short, th there was about 24 hours of, of this um, experience where I was just taken on a wild goose chase uh, with m mind games and uh, there was a miscommunication and... and uh, on mind altering substances which which caused a lot of friction between the people I was around. What were uh, you taking? What was it? It was LSD. Yeah. Yeah. So the mind's super open and uh you're very vulnerable, very malleable to uh to your environment and, and especially when things like mind games come into play, which shouldn't ever be a thing, but unfortunately it exists out there, you know? Of course, a representation of how uh, those people must feel within to be able to to do that to someone and play mind games and make people fear for their lives, really. <clears throat> um, but basically, when the substance wore off, I was so far away from myself and had been taken so so far away from my, myself and my center that I had forgotten who I was, really, and... 
that stayed when the substance wore off. So I was still stuck in this, this fearful, paranoid state. And uh, that lasted for a year and a half. And um, it was the most terrifying year and a half of my life. I thought the whole world was against me. I couldn't trust anyone. My friendships were um, affected. My love relationships affected my relationships with family. It didn't matter who it was. I, my, my trust had just been ripped away because the people I was around during that very sensitive uh, time um, were out to hurt me in a way. <clears throat> so it took a, a, a year and a half for me to bring myself out of this. So for a year and a half, you was like paranoid and yeah. psychotic. Yeah, even in my own bed, in my own home, in my parents' house, even sitting on the sofa next to my family, I was always thinking that, you know, if we were watching a movie and my father leant over to my mother to say something soft in her ear, I'm sitting there freaking out, wondering, what are they saying about me? What are they planning? It was it was completely bonkers. But when you was in it, you didn't know it was bonkers. You was in it. Right, right. I couldn't stop to bring myself here and say, hey, wake up. Like, yeah. Like, snap out of it. Um, so, yeah, a year and a half of progressively pulling myself out of this. I had many voices in my head. Um, and one of the voices out of many in my head during this time made sense. And it was very early on in this process. And it said, do not tell your family about this. And what I understood is that it would lead to doctors, medication, numbing my brain with medication. And I, I absolutely knew in my heart from the level that I was at, the state that I was at, and how bonkers it was that I would end up in a straitjacket as, as well. So I'm so grateful to this day that I listened to that because it seems against our natural way of doing things. Of course you would tell your loved ones for support, um, but I understood how it might not be what I needed. And so this year and a half, was full of self-exploration, diving into my mind, my emotions, and trying to break it all down and understand why am I thinking these things and why am I feeling these things? What happened on that day that caused me to feel these, these feelings that I'm stuck with? And um, it was so beautiful because I got so deep into the mind and really got to understand the intricacies of the mind and how it works. And it, it, it was so detrimental. My mind was so detrimental to my, my state that I had to learn out of survival and experience to eventually tell myself out of exhaustion and fear, like, enough, you are not your mind. Stop listening to your mind. Mm. It's not your friend right now. That's okay, but it's, it's, you're not your mind. I also learned to then detach my emotions from my thoughts. Um, so I could then observe the thoughts, the chaotic, psychotic thoughts, and not let my emotions get caught up in this whirlpool. Um, so that is an amazing... Uh, Sounds like, like a, it's like a spiritual awakening, right? Right, exactly. What, when, when you read all these books by Eckhart Tolle or Deepak yeah. Chopra, you, you read all these kind of books and they're saying like, you're not your thoughts. Right. Detach from your emotions, be the witness. And yeah. obviously taking LSD and being paranoid for a whole year and a half isn't like a great way to go, but it sounds like you've had exactly what they're talking about through mindfulness or meditation or... Is it exactly, so? exactly, yeah. I, I discovered the, the spiritual teachings after that year and a half and was very funny to hear them say these things and I got really there. excited. I know this, I know this is what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I think fun. like I've got so many questions for you, mate, but I think it's, that's such a beautiful thing to actually mention to people because there's a lot of people that are going through some craziness, whether it's suicidal thoughts or, you know, drug-induced psychosis, paranoid schizophrenia, mm -hmm. like, it maybe it is a gift for some of us. Not everybody, I know that. Yeah. But for some of us, maybe it can be a gift if you can turn it around. Um, because when you realize you're not the thoughts and the feelings and, and this stuff that's going on, then you're, you, I know you are, but you, you seem more free and you're more kind of like aligned with something um, 
bigger than thinking and bigger than feeling. And I suppose that would be my first question is like, how did you pull yourself out of that? If there is anybody watching this and they're going through a, an addiction or a bad trip or they're lost in like this, this madness, bless them. Mm. You know, we both know what that's like. Mm. How did you even start? Like, how did you start? You said you introspected and you, you know, I'm like, how did you even begin that without like a, a monk or a guru or a teacher sort of guiding you? You just, mm. you just start looking at yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm, I must say that there was seemingly an high, a higher essence of myself guiding me through this. And one of the, the, one of the main things that got me through it was every night having all the time in the world, not sleeping many nights. Um, I would go back to this weekend that it all started and I would play back this experience in my mind like a video. And I would go and find all the moments during this experience where my trauma deepened and I essentially lost another piece of myself or my soul. And, and just winging it. Yeah, I had no idea. I, I now understand that there's techniques that have a name and everything called soul retrieval and reversing and stuff like this, where you go into the past and you visualize it. You go to those moments and you basically rewrite them and reclaim that part of yourself that you lost in that moment. And it works through the quantum field and you, you retrieve that piece of yourself and it kind of comes back and it comes all the way to the present moment and you feel it drop in. And that was the main, the main thing that got me through. And I slowly went to reclaim all these parts of myself in all of these moments uh, and kind of spoke myself through those moments as if I was standing there next to myself. Mm. Um, and it was, it was so incredible because when I would reclaim a piece of myself, I would feel a part of me dr drop back in and my mind that was always so tense and oh, I almost had a constant frown actually during that time I w my mind was always so tense and in in the paranoia you know and I would feel this tense mind kind of release like a tense muscle and you just release it and just like that ah and I'd feel it drop in and I would feel also as if I was up against the barrier in my head and it would like pop and break through. And there would even be a physical sensation and there would be clicks and pops in my body like, like uh, un unblockages, unlockings of, of the energetic distortions, which is, is what it is. And emotions are all energy, right? And when you release and heal these emotions, you can feel these physical shifts and effects so that happened throughout the year and a half slowly bringing myself back piece by piece Bro, what a year and a half <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it's like being on a like you know a fun on the worst kind of like you know roller coaster or something and it just doesn't stop yeah yeah the one of those night horror roller yeah, coasters yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, you said um, something about a quantum field like what's that like for people that don't know what the quantum field is or like you know this stuff is far out but they do know what psychotic and drug addictions are or you know depressing moods and stuff that they're going through so what is a quantum field yeah <clears throat> i i can't I, I have my own experience of it and that's all i can share yeah. and and everyone can read up about it but you know there are studies now of the quantum field and it's, it's really on an energy level and everything is energy. We live in a world of energy. Everything is vibrating atoms. Um, even your thoughts are frequencies, i.e. energy. And um, yeah, so we can interact with that space when we interact with life on an energetic level and everything can be dealt with that way because the core of everything is energy. So even physical ailments, diseases in the body, physical things that the, 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 the mainstream out there will say is absolutely genetic and can only be healed with certain medicine if we can try and figure out how to unlock the physicality through medication. Um, it, it can be... We can... Mm, kind of lost where I was going with that. <laughs> mm. 
the quantum field. It's it's the energy field. Mm. Yeah. There's some great books by um, Rupert Sheldrake and I think Max Planck, were they the fathers or whatever that talked about it. And then basically it's like this energy field. We we have a technique in our meditation course, um, which you've done, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Bodhi re-imprinting and what it gets you to do, like what, for your example, you have a trauma or a situation and part of you splits off to deal with that trauma. And it could be when you're a child, mm. you know, and there's no such thing as a big trauma and a small trauma. Traumas are all created through perception. It's like the person's perception. So some person might be abused physically, mentally, and they might feel like that's a massive trauma, but somebody might just not get a cuddle at the right time and they might feel like that's a massive trauma um, mm. and what we do is we get them to go back and, and change those traumas in the quantum field and it's a theory you know I, I love theories for me mm. I'm more about like you see the results and when I used to work with like homeless people and addicts that were really traumatised you would see like their life's changing they would give up drugs they would start eating healthy they would start forgiving or loving themselves and these mm. are people that were living on the street homeless drug addicts and we would t teach them to go back and um, heal these traumas through this technique. And uh, it's cool. Basically, what happens is you have this echo, which is an energy consciousness hologram. And so when well, you was doing this naturally, right. this is why I'm fascinated to ask you because you've just done it without knowing the technique. Yeah. And so you're just going in, picking it apart, replaying the movie, changing this, finding a bit of yourself. And that's what the theory would say is you're going back into this matrix or the field, um, the morphic field they call it, and you would go back to the echo and then you would either heal it, change it, talk to it, which is i.e. your younger self. And on an energetic and a cellular level, this is what the theory says, you're actually changing the frequency. And I was just like, when I first heard it, I was like, Pff. and if I'm honest, I was just like, mm, I don't know about that. But when they taught me this technique, you actually go through a whole process, you guide people through meditation. They taught me how to do it so I could go and use it with my clients. I went back to this drug and alcohol drop-in center with all these homeless people and I would take them through this process. And again, for me, I'm just so practical. It's like when you see people just break down and cry because they've held on to traumas for 30, 40 years mm. or you see the, the changes happening because they've... And I'm just like, whatever the theory is, it doesn't matter. You can see the change and I can see it in you. Right, right. Like you've naturally done that. And I find that fascinating how you've just tuned into that. Mm. I suppose it's an innate, innate gift that we've got and somehow for some reason you're on a journey of being able to tap into that. Guys, I know you're enjoying the video, but I've got a quick question for you. Are you okay with that monkey mind being a monkey? We've all got this voice inside the head, all voices, filled with self-doubt, criticism, judgment, but most people don't understand how important it is to master that monkey mind. So look, if you've got a monkey mind or a voice that is just busy inside your head and it never seems to shut up, I know exactly how you feel. And thankfully, I found meditation about 20 years ago. And so I have an amazing opportunity for you. It's the Bodhi Meditation Teacher Training Program. This 10 week program is designed to share with you eight Bodhi meditations. And the amazing thing about these meditations is that they are scientifically proven to help you reduce stress, reduce anxiety, uplift your mood, boost your energy. In other words, create that kind of lifestyle, that energy and that health and that happiness that most people crave. Over the course of 10 weeks, I'm going to be your meditation coach. And at the end of this course, you're going to become a certified Bodhi meditation teacher. That means that you can coach people one-to-one, -one, you can work from anywhere in the world, build online courses, or even teach meditation at yoga retreats or anywhere you decide. So click that link below and together we'll open up your heart so that you wake up feeling positive and literally this buzz for life. The link is below. Now you can get back to your video. Have an amazing day. Yeah, and, and I like what you say. It's innate and it should be taught in schools really because we do live in a world of energy. And mm. when we work with life in that way, everything is doable, everything is changeable. We are sovereign and we are free and we can make these changes. We can decode these traumas. They're just stored emotions, stored mm. energy, stored frequency that can be released. It's fascinating, like you're so right. It's like every person, you probably say 95 to 98% of humans on this planet are gonna go through a trauma. Again, it could be just getting a little smack off on the bum when you're a naughty little kid, <laughs> or, or it might be something, you know, you know, yeah. serious, serious, yeah. Mm. But it's only down to the perception of that kid that it creates a trauma in in, in their mind. Mm. And nobody at school is teaching him how to release traumas. 
No one's even teaching people how to think or how to feel. And I'm just like, when I look at it, I'm like, what on earth are you doing? Like, yeah. equip the children and then they're going to have like years and years of emotional intelligence or psychological freedom. But instead it seems the other way, you know? Mm. So um, trapped in thinking and trapped in traumas. And when you look at people and you see where people are stuck in life, you can understand why they are trapped. It's because they're still just dead. And back to those echo things, if you don't change those traumas, they are playing out in your subconscious mind over and over and over again. You might not hear it, you might not relive it, but your next relationship, you'll attract the same thing again. Mm -hmm. You might not make the kind of money that you want to make. You might abuse yourself, self-destruct, take drugs. You know, you're just, because in the subconscious mind, it's just playing out and reliving the trauma and the pain, which is then when you look at a drug addict, you can say, well, why on earth are you injecting heroin? Like, that's crazy. But to that person, actually, you're soothing some trauma and mm. some pain, so it's kind of protecting him. Mm. But fascinating, huh? Yeah. But they don't teach it at school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy. That's where we come in. Yes. That's where our work comes I'm in. I'm going back to school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you could go. <laughs> I'll be here drinking coconuts. You should ring me up, let me know how it goes. <laughs> so what do you do now then? You help people go through this process. Have you been helping people that are in a similar situation that you was in that psychotic episode. Yeah, yeah, all the way from mental illness to, to deep traumas that I haven't been in, but working with the, the, the traumas itself, the energy blockages inside of their bodies, their hearts, their minds, and even their energy field sometimes. The, the, the discussion on our eternal souls that go from life to life in, in different carnations, uh, there are sometimes energetic uh, traumas that are carried through and essentially they are just the lessons that we are waiting to learn. Oh, I like that. So you feel like a trauma that's, if you believe that there's a soul that reincarnates into another life and you have some lessons to learn, that's, that's what it's for, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe every single thing in life is a lesson. Every so-called darkness that we experience, there's no more good and bad anymore for me because all the so-called bad has a diamond of a lesson inside of it, waiting for us to see it, acknowledge it and release it. So, as you say, those patterns don't keep coming back. Mm. We have to go in, we have to face those things, right? We can't just keep denying it or change a partner or go elsewhere in the world. It, it's, it, there's, no, it's, there's no outside, it's all a reflection of your inside. They're gonna keep showing themselves in love to be seen, to be heard, to be acknowledged and to be transmuted as the God sovereign free being that you are, that we are. There's a great quote. It's like, wherever you go, you take yourself with you. Nice. So, you know, if you try and go on, and if you try and move country to get rid of all your problems, it ain't going to work. <laughs> if you try and get a new partner, mm -hmm. because all of the other ones, you know, they had the problems. <laughs> it's like, you're the one with the problems. <laughs> so wherever you go, you're taking you and your problems with you. So mm -hmm. I like what you said, like, deal with it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think, though, it's easy for me, and you, not easy for me and you, we've had to go on our journeys and we're here now. I suppose we can be an inspiration to people and say it works. Mm. But why is it so hard for people to look at those lessons and continue in that trauma? Why is it so hard for people to get out of it, do you think? Because the ego won't accept responsibility and accountability for those problems. That's my opinion. Yeah. And in a way, by going in the lessons, you're kind of letting go of the ego or you're going to... Like they call it an ego death, right? For a reason. Yeah. It doesn't want to die, does it? Yeah. Like, no, no, keep doing this, keep doing that, even though you're suffering and going around in these circles. Yeah, we need to be humble to be able to take responsibility for those things and change what needs to be changed inside. People don't like being wrong, you know? Mm. You, 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 you definitely um, are somebody that is a living, breathing example of somebody that will face their programming or their mm. ego and just like look at this stuff whatever it is you know right we've had so many conversations and i look at you and i'm just like wow whether it's i won't go into it but you know you go into certain things and like you face it yeah. and you're like you really look at it like do you think that's your gift from the lesson that you went through because you really had to look at yourself for that like year and a half mm. now when your programming and stuff comes up in a certain area you're somebody who just takes a good look at it in such a humble way as well you're like right and I'm, I'm inspired by you when we have those conversations. I'm like, wow, not a lot of guys would do this. Mm. 
Thanks, brother. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't see any other way. And if people can be guided to see that there's nothing to hide from or run away from but yourself, we can, we can, we can do that and we can purify. I guess I'm dedicated to purification and, and bringing in my, my utmost untainted pure essence of what we all are. And that's also what I found in that year and a half when the mind was so chaotic and so unreal, I had no choice eventually but to say, okay, I need to find the one thing that is real inside of me because even though I couldn't see it or sense it anywhere, I knew that it was in there somewhere. What, what is that? I love this. I'm getting goosebumps. What, when you say, what is that thing that's real in you? Do you think it is the? <sighs> <laughs> That's what I felt when you said it. I was like, oh, yeah! It's it's our infinite essence of creation that we are. I'm dedicated to that. I'm dedicated to that. So anything that is holding me away from that, I wanna lovingly release it and purify it and cleanse it. And, and transmute it. Yeah. Do you still have a you still have a voice in the head then? It's like not that. <laughs> no. 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 No voices in the head. No, it's it's now in the heart. It's the intuition. It's the clear it's the clear stream of 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 creation. It's But you but uh, do you still have a voice that's like talking to you and like planning things or a voice that sometimes one might make judgments or fears, and okay, and now yeah. you can see that it's not you. You just know it's not you. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. So it's, yeah, it's, it's still there, but you know that you're here. Yes, and definitely not in the wo- in the level that it was during that year and a half, because <laughs> there was like multiple voices, and who knows where they were coming from. But it didn't seem helpful, and it didn't seem like my voice. But yeah, there's a there's there's still an inner voice, and some programs that have to be moved through and some judgments, although I'm quite quick to catch them when it happens now and then uh, detach from them and yeah. realize it's, it's not us. Yeah, no, 100%, same, same. I can, it's still there, but yeah. it's like, well, it's just, sometimes I literally laugh out loud. Yeah, like, like, that's <laughs> the best part. Like you hear it and you're like, what are you <laughs> about? And then you, you know that you're essence and you know that you're this source or intelligence. Yeah. And it's still there. I, yeah. This is what I'm writing another book at the moment. And when a lot of people talk about like my mind or my anxiety, I'm like, that is the first thing you need to let go of. Like, mm. it's not your mind. Mm. It's not your anxiety. What you think is like the feelings and the thoughts, what you think, that's just programming and generations of maybe brainwashing, conditioning. Mm. What you really are is the intelligence and the infinite universal mind. Yeah. That doesn't mean to say it's just going to disappear and you're going to be enlightened, but it's still there. But that clinging and that attachment to my thoughts, my opinions, to my feelings is like, I think that's what creates your suffering for, for the general mm. um, population if you've not meditated and stuff. And when you have these extreme cases like you're talking about, like a, a whole year and a half, which must have been crazy, like you really are battling with this thing that doesn't want to let go, you know, it's trying to get you from all angles. Yeah. Mm. Makes sense, mm. huh? Yeah, yeah. And the truth is that we are all that infinite essence. And when, in, in my experience, when I went in and I found that, that pure essence within, I found not only myself in that moment, but I felt the core of every other living being. And it's been the biggest gift as well, because I, I see that in everyone and I speak to that thing inside them when I speak to them. Mm. Without the stories and the masks and, and the, the personas, yeah, and the roles that people play. It's, 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 it's all layers on top of this pure essence, which we all are. And it's such a joy to, to encourage that and, and, and bring that out in people. That's what you do in the coaching. You help people get into that. Right, yeah, mm. yeah. Marian Williams says something like, we're not, we're not afraid of the darkness. We're actually afraid of how light we truly are like you know if you see yeah. yourself you would like if you knew who you truly were from that level like you just cry and just so much love and i've mm. had definitely had glimmers and tastes of that and i love it and i'm like wow she's so right and mm-hmm. like that darkness and the shadow self is so far from who we are and i wonder whether sometimes like 
because we've been so brainwashed not to be in that light and that love. And we get glimpses of it when we see a baby smile, or we see a sunset, or for, for people that are not on the path, maybe they have moments of it. Um, but I wonder if it's because like, we're so conditioned to be in the darkness. Mm. You know, the, yeah. the, the, the light now is like, for some it just doesn't exist. Yeah, it's scary. It's As crazy, you said before, I, I think people fear their true power mm. and it keeps us from, from, from going in that direction. It seems like a lot of responsibility mm. to, to hold and harness that, but it's, it's absolutely the greatest thing if we taught how to harness it and, and move with it. I mentioned that I don't quite believe in the term psychosis and schizophrenia anymore. And um, it's, it's um, in my experience, of course, and through many I've met around the world and shared the story with and heard similar stories, they all share the same kind of perception not all, but many of them do, and it's so lovely to, to, to hear this, is that in a psychotic state or a schizophrenic state where you're open to so many more senses, you're hearing so many more things going on around, your mind is more open in this psychotic state. You're actually receiving a whole lot more information, but because we're not used to that, it's absolutely scary and because we don't know how to govern and navigate it and set your, your, your boundaries, but in an energetic way and say what we don't allow, what we don't want to hear right now, what we would like to listen to, um, it, it, can, it, it can absolutely free us completely, like you said earlier. Mm. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with people who have psychosis and schizophrenia. And that's truly what I can bring out of that experience as well. And when I share that with my clients, they haven't heard that before. <coughs> and it brings so much relief to them sometimes because they say, oh my gosh, I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew I was okay, but there's just all these things happening that I don't know how to deal with. And that's so beautiful. It sometimes brings people to tears just to hear that there's nothing wrong with them. Mm. Just learning more about that state and not how to shut it off completely again, but refine it into a gift. And this is the work of channelers, really. They, um, it wasn't all flowers and roses in the beginning. They they probably had a very uncomfortable initial experience when their gifts opened up again, because they are innate gifts. We all have it built in. Our intuition, our clairvoyance, clairsentience, our feeling, really feeling and sensing. The body is so incredibly intelligent. It's your GPS for life. Yeah. It tells you more than the mind could ever tell you that that is, that is pure, that is real, that doesn't lie. It doesn't have many fragments of other people's stories and conditioning and programming. And that's the journey of embodiment. That's what, that's what I feel I'm here to do is, 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 is also bring people into the body and, and, to, and to their own inner navigation mm. system. See, I mean, the, the body's so intelligent, like the things that it does for you, like you're breathing, we're all breathing, not asking ourselves to breathe, not focusing mm. on the breath. Unless you sit down and meditate and do breath work, or your heart is pumping, you know, thousands of times a day. I don't know about you, but if I had to do that on myself, I'd probably forget. Like shit, I've got to breathe today, I've got to do my heart, I've got to pump the blood around. Like some right. people go wrong. I forget my sandwiches when I leave for work. <laughs> so I would I would forget to do all these things. And the, and it's just doing it for you. Yeah. Naturally, you break a bone, it heals. You cut something, it it, it heals naturally. And we've, I agree, yeah. we've come so far away from trusting that intelligence. Right. So caught up in these stories of, yeah, the mainstream insanity. Then all the stories, and let's just face it, we're all deluded with the stories that we tell ourselves and <laughs> everybody's just talking. And it's like, sometimes I'm like, what are you on about? <laughs> but when you come back to that intelligence, that innate kind of feeling, you can't really deny that. That's what gives me the goosebumps. Like yeah. I feel it, I'm like, yeah. I don't even need to prove it to anybody. I don't care about science. I don't care about guru. It's like, mm. I'm getting the goosebumps right now and I feel like I'm connected to whatever you'd want to call it, the soul or the spirit. Yeah. I think if we could help people, which I love what you do, embody that and trust that more, 
because you haven't got to find a guru, you haven't got to find a psychologist, not disrespecting any of those, right. but really you're the guru. Right. You're your healer, you're your teacher, like exactly what you did. Yeah. There was a, a girl once I was working with in a drug and alcohol drop-in centre, beautiful woman, and she came in, and I used to be a Reiki healer, and she came in and I would give her like Reiki. And then one day, I didn't know, like she was a new client and she was a heroin addict, but like on the outside, she looked like she had everything together. But on the inside, bless her, she was in a bad way. And anyway, cut a long story short, she got on the, re- on the, on the Reiki bed, like the massage bed, and she said, shall I unscrew my legs? And I was like, what? And she literally unscrewed, from her knees down, she unscrewed both of her legs. And I just did, I've known her for like a month maybe. She'd always been in a drop-in centre, but I didn't even tell, I didn't even know that she'd had plastic legs. To cut a long story short, bless her, that she hated herself so much that she'd laid on a train station uh, and some guy had saved her. She'd laid on a train track, some guy had saved her. I think I've mentioned this story before. And, and she survived. But then what happened was, she was seeing a psychologist and, or again, I'm not disrespecting Anybody, you know, they're professionals, whatever that means. Um, But they told her, and she said, I don't want to be here. Like she said, I I don't want to be here, I don't want to live. And they told her that she shouldn't think that way. Like, don't think like that. Hmm. And so when she came, we did the Reiki, we sat down, we did our like one-to-one session. And I was like, I would never say that to you. Like, if you don't want to be here, say you don't want to be here. Like, if you want to die and you want to kill yourself, let's, first of all, just honour her and respect that. I wasn't telling her to go and do it, obviously, but I was like, if, you're, if, you, if that's what's going on in you and then you start fighting that and denying that and then other people say, don't think that, don't feel like that, but I actually think that creates such a confusion to the person. And it is kind of like schizophrenic, schizophrenia or drug-induced psychosis or paranoia when you start fighting that shit, like it's actually worse. You're probably just better off just being in it. And, and so it fascinated me because that, again, I'm not going against what other people taught and I'm sure there must've been a reason why he was teaching her that. But from the interpretation that she told me, I just felt so sorry for her that everybody told her she shouldn't feel like that way. And so in our sessions, I was like, tell me how much you don't want to be here. Mm. Like, just tell me that you don't. And she's like, I can't. I'm like, why not? Like, I broke all the rules, you know? <laughs> I was like, I don't give a shit about the poem. And I was just like, just tell me that you'd rather be dead right now and tell me why. And bro, she just cried her eyes out. She told me how she really felt. A few years later, she's now a mum. She's off drugs. And I'm not saying it's because of those sessions, but it's just because I think somebody just recognised the light that was suffering so much in her mm. that she, didn't, she generally didn't want to be here. Mm. And to, to fight that or to say that you should be here, like, to me, that's just, again, it's common sense. It's like, why would you say that to somebody? Mm. Would you say that if anybody comes to your sessions and they feel that way, that that would be a, a good thing to say to them? Or would you, like, tell them that they should think positive, even though I'm Mr. Positive? You know, I can share a, a short story, uh, and similarly to yours, where you're not guiding them away from their feeling, but you're encouraging them to feel. Mm. And there's a saying, the only way to heal is to feel and get all the suppressed emotions that. out. I've... Um, one specific client had a very deep trauma of a more of a mental idea of something that he was presented with or told about, which haunted him for years and years and years. And I was so relieved to hear that all his seeming trauma was related to this concept in his head that he'd never gone and explored, but just was so... (laughs) <laughs> destroyed by the idea, I said, do you trust me? Can we go right now and can I show you that thing? Mm. And can, you exp- can we sit together and, 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 and look at this? And we did. I took them right into the, the thing they were running away from. So I do encourage them to feel like, like, like you did. Um, yeah, I think yeah. that's what a lot of people are. What you just said there at the end of that, running away from it. Mm. Like, we're, like whether it's watching pornography, you know, whether it's gambling, whether it's, you know, drugs, mm. whether it's alcohol, even if it's just binging on Netflix and overeating and overconsuming, we're generally avoiding, which makes sense because mm. why would you want to sit down and face the darkness, right? <laughs> but we're running away from it. But I feel like what I get from you is like run towards it. Yeah, look at it in the face it, and, and it, it loses its power over us. The fear is the thing that controls our entire lives. There's a story about the, the wolf pack and, and it's more a shamanic practice or meditation where you, 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 we all have our inner wolf pack 
and each wolf stands for a different uh, characteristic of us or emotion or aspect. And the alpha is fear all the time. And you go into the center of this, this your wolf pack and into the circle of wolves and you call out the alpha and you call him to come and stand in front of you, face to face, nose to nose, breathing in each other's face, feeling the breath and looking into its eyes and just being present and acknowledging it. And it slowly dissolves. The, the, the fear, the fear, the fear in all of its, in all of its, um, in all of its facets, it dissolves and you become your alpha. You become in charge. I've never heard that before. I love that. It's beautiful. Is that kind of a technique that you teach the clients sometimes? It is something I, I have taught many times, yeah. 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 Yeah, so for me, I think the last year I noticed that I was getting like a cheeky packet of crisps and a chocolate bar at like seven, eight o'clock and it started to become a bit of a pattern and I was like, what am I doing? You know, I'm at home, I'm alone and then I'm like, I get this little craving to go and get some food. I've always had a sweet tooth and I think it was in this last year, yeah, last year, more than anything, like I really sat down and, and I started to look at it. And bro, like it was like, I've given up crack, I've given up drugs, I've given up prostitution, <laughs> I've given up so many things. Like trying to give up chocolate and crisps was the hardest thing <laughs> because it was so normal just to go and get some crisps and chocolate. Mm. And me and Antonio, the camera guy, we talk about this a lot. Like I realized I was kind of like, there was a loneliness, there was avoidance. For me, there was a self-hatred. And I was like, wow, like never. And then I was like, that's why you took the drugs. Like it, even though I got off of the drug, there was still more things to look at. I was like, that's why you were sleeping around with everyone. That's mm. why you, and then I was like, wow, you're now even doing this on Chris. You just, so I sat with it. And again, it wasn't the wolf pack thing, but it was definitely sitting with this discomfort mm. and this kind of energy. And like you said, like, it's so beautiful how it disappears and it sets you free. Mm. Like on the other side of it, you, like you just find more of you. Like yeah. it's just not who you are. And then it got me on this whole thing of like, shit, like I don't believe these addictions or these energies or these thoughts that are coming into us are ours. Yeah. Like I've laid there before in Shavasana and I've like literally seen these energies coming through us. I'm like, it just like, it isn't us. It's like we was, I was programmed to do that. I'm not blaming anybody or you're brought up to do that because it's normal. Mm. And like, that's, that's far from the divine spirit. Mm. And then we've got all these patterns and these habits that just kind of like steal um, our Earth. focus and our attention to, to get us to do that. And again, now we live in a society where it's just normal to do these things. It's just everybody's addicted. Everybody's doing something. I'm like, it's so backward thinking. Mm -hmm. Like it, To me, it's just so obvious now. But you have to go through that journey. So if there's somebody at home probably thinking that me and you are off our nuts talking, they're probably thinking we're on LSD right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're on drugs, right? No, we're not. For, we're not. Okay, Antonio's the dealer. Speak to him. <laughs> But on a serious note, if there is somebody that, and this is what I love about you as well, side note, is that we have these deep, deep conversations and then we just have a laugh of it. Yeah. So like try not to take yeah. it too seriously. It's, it's important work, yeah. but also be lighthearted as well. I think that that's what I really get from you when me and you have our random conversations. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for reminding me that. Thank you. Yeah. 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 But yeah, if there's somebody at home and they might not be feeling lighthearted and it's a laugh, but they're generally going through stuff. What would you, what advice, if you want to give advice or some tips, would you say to people to, to kind of get through these challenging times or? Hello, you amazing viewer. I hope you're enjoying this video and I've got some really exciting news for you. You know that moment when you're reading a book and it just ignites that light bulb moment for you? It wakes something up inside you, that passion, that enthusiasm or that spark for life. Well, the big announcement is my new book, Awaken Your Spirit, is ready for either pre-order or depending on when you're watching this book, you can order your copy right now. Over the last couple of years, I've poured my heart and soul into writing Awaken Your Spirit. I don't know about you, but sometimes that voice inside the head just never seems to shut up. Well, this book shows you a step-by-step -step process on how to really close your eyes and go inside and separate from this monkey mind and this never-ending conversation that goes round and round and round. Whether you're seeking inner peace, you're looking to recharge your batteries, or you want to feel more grounded and in harmony with life, this book has got something for you and it's going to show you how to connect to a very deeper level within you. Now, I don't want to keep any more of your time 
get back to the interview. And again, if you're somebody that really is looking to get back in the driving seat of your life, master this monkey mind, reach your full potential and ignite that excitement, that enthusiasm and that passion for life. Make sure you awaken your spirit just below. Have an amazing day and enjoy the rest of the video. I might add that that was another big breakthrough of my year and a half process out of months into it and exhaustion, not sleeping for days and, and being so fearful, so fearful of I don't know what. I eventually said to myself, almost pulling my hair out of my head most nights in my bed, I eventually got so exhausted and I, and I stopped and I said to myself, what the F are you so afraid of? What? What? What are you afraid of? And I ended up laughing at myself of how afraid I was, as if I was separate from myself. And it was so liberating because in that act, I had separated from the thoughts and the emotions and the everything and laughed and laughed and laughed at myself. Yeah, it's definitely a medicine, right? Yeah, yeah. Laughing, not really laughing, is you laughing at the, the, the false sense of self, right? The, the yeah. fear, like you say, or the addiction or the habits. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. So that is a good one, is to, to try detach and not take your sensory experience or your mind too seriously and observe it, you know, observe it. That, that's huge, that... that allows us to step back from it and detach and be liberated from it for that moment at least. And those moments can get longer and longer. The more we practice that, the more we try meditation and um, yeah, and, and, and go inwards is, a, is the next advice I would share is go in and to feel all With, these feelings. So somebody that's never gone in before, they've never even meditated, what on earth does that mean to go inward? That okay. Would, yeah. Yeah. Try and discern what the emotions are based on. Where do they come from and how far back do they go? Is there a pattern? Is there something we're trying to run away from? Is there a trauma that these uncomfortable emotions and thoughts remind you of? And a lot of us forget our childhood because we're so sensitive there that we take so much personally, even the things that aren't personal. And they can be the seeds of, of what later on becomes a bigger and bigger. Every experience after that childhood that resonates with that same feeling of that seeding point where it all began, uh, layers and layers onto it and grows and grows. This is, this is why people would attract the same relationship and the same kind of situation or the problem. Right. Because really they're kind of vibrating that frequency from childhood and then they just keep drawing it in. Not saying that they deserve that, but it's like mm. it's inside them. Is that what you mean? Like yeah. repeating a pattern? Yeah, exactly that. Mm. It's, it's all started somewhere and we need to try and go back and face those, those, those traumas and those fears. And when we start to face that seed way back years ago, everything that grew from that later on through the years dissolves already. We don't need to deal with the trauma of always now and last year and the year before that. If there's a pattern there, go to the seed and all those branches of that tree that grew dissolve with the seed when you, when you heal that. And of course, ask for help, you know? We're in a world where people are so afraid to ask for help. From, it's, it's tough because many people realize going to the, the mainstream sources for help and, and medicine, they're aware that it doesn't feel good. It doesn't do good for their bodies often. So they, they, they don't ask for help, but there are people out there that are, that are more understanding of trauma, trauma release. It's, it's luckily growing this, this practice, yeah? In the world right now, it's... It's massive, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, I'm glad you said that, ask for help. I think that's one of the... When I look back at my younger self, he was like eight, 19, I think, or something. A raging crack addict, like just a little monkey who was lost. And I remember he rang up, or I rang up, uh, a drug and alcohol counsellor. Mm. And I asked for help. And I'll never forget that. And like going there, I felt like, you know, all my mates, I didn't tell none of my mates about it. Mm. And I went there and the first 
counsellor I spoke to, I just didn't really gel with. Not judging her or anybody that kind of goes down the traditional route. I think it's amazing. They've got their heart in the right place. Mm-hmm. But I had to see like a, a substitute counsellor one day when she was off. And he just like, he had the same background as me. I could just tell. And he'd been there and done that, you know. And just for me personally, like number one, reaching out, I felt so vulnerable. And I felt like I was, even though I had drug-induced psychosis and a crack addiction, <laughs> I felt reaching out and asking for help was weird. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my God, what's the matter with you? Yeah. But it was the best thing I ever done. And for me, and even now, like if I want to learn about business, I'd rather learn from a millionaire than learn from one of my friends that, that are trying to make a couple of grand a year. Or if I want to learn in, about relationships, I go and speak to somebody that's been in a 10-year relationship rather than someone who's just met somebody for a few months. And I suppose what I'm trying to say is for me, when I was younger, seeing somebody that had gone through this program, like the addictions and stuff, it just, it really showed me that there was hope and it really showed me that somebody got me and somebody that had been there and done that. And so like when you just said like reach out for help, there's people that have been there and done it. If you want to go down the mainstream route, Go down it by all means, but there are millions of people out there that have overcome something that you're going through. Mm. And I would say find somebody like that because number one, they know exactly what you're going through. Mm. The ego tries to make like addiction or whatever you're talking about, anything really. It's all me. It's really personal. Nobody understands. It's like millions of people have gone through it. Mm. Find somebody like you that can train you or, or guide you through these episodes because you know it firsthand, mm. especially if you've been like, you know, in that year and a half of madness. Mm. Somebody that's not been through that, again, not judging them, mm. but how can they really know that? Do you know what I mean? Right. There's no amount of studying a book of other people's experiences that can give you the experiential understanding of how to come out of that. Mm. Once again, I agree with you. No judgment to, to all the professionals out there, and they have their place for many people. Yeah. Super helpful, but... Some people might want to see them rather than the person that's been there and done it because it's too close to them. So, like, mm. but just for the person that's listening, like, mm. I think me and you could both probably say that, yeah, find somebody that's been there and done it and we'll put all your details underneath the video. If anyone is going through that shit, like, it's crazy. I've been there, you've been there. Like, reach out and ask for some help. Message sure. you or something, you know? Sure. I'd be honoured to help yeah. anyone. This and is then you the... do coaching, you help people, and it's just like, for me, it's the way forward, right? Yeah, passing on all the things that we've learned by making it out of the darkness yeah you and know, that's no, when it go on, mate sorry oh sorry i was just gonna say and empowering others yes to do it themselves and not becoming reliant on others or gurus or other practices keep coming back keep being helpless and asking others to fix your problems but someone who can empower you to do it yourself guide you through the process because that never leaves you yeah and that you can pass on again and again and this is our purpose here is to share and to walk each other home together oh i love man that. walk each other home we don't have to do this alone anymore those mm. times are gone mm. those times are gone this is why social media and all these platforms, even though they get a bit of a bad rep and people uh, get addicted to them in themselves, but they're also giving people a voice and an opportunity to say that you're not alone and you can reach out. I remember years ago, I went to like an AA conference and an uh, NA conference that's Alcoholics and Narcotics Anonymous. And honestly, because I kind of went through the counselling route and saw some specialists, I, I honestly thought that like, I was the only person with a drug problem, <laughs> an alcohol problem. <laughs> I just didn't know that there were other people that existed. And I went to this conference and there were hundreds of ex-addicts and um, alcoholics. And, you know, in, in the meetings they would say, and I just listened to people's stories and I just connected to people that had been like clean for 10 years. And again, I don't go to the meetings anymore. I went for about six months. It served its purpose at the time. But like, I just want to let people know that there's a lot of people out there that really want to help. Yeah. And they want to help from the right place, like you said. They mm. just want to empower you because mm. and then about you, once you get through the other side, it's just like you found the garden and it's like everybody can come and look in the garden and like, you know, drink some coconuts. It's like <laughs> if you're in the garden on your own, it's a bit boring. You just want to go back and say, hey, guys, come and have a coconut. It's right. like it's just natural. You want to share it, right? Yeah. And that's why people are generally trying to help. Right, right. Mm. Yeah. We've forgotten about our own kind and we've, let, we've left everyone to fend for themselves and I recently had a very deep experience because I continue to work on myself. There's, uh, no one's made it, you know. We're all in this journey together, always uh, bettering ourselves and, and, and growing. 
Um, and this experience was so powerful how it showed me where we first lost trust in our own kind because of the betrayals or the land being taken away from us generations ago mm. and, and how that left a core wound of humanity, of aloneness and that we can't trust others of our kind and we have to do this all alone. It was so mind-blowing because I saw how far spread it went and how our entire world is built on that in a way. You know, the communities have been lost and, you know, assisting those. You, you mentioned homeless people earlier and, and, you know, how many people shun them away and think they're not part of society. They're our own kind. They're our brothers and sisters and we have forgotten about them. You know, and it's beautiful to hear many of your stories, how you speak to these kinds of peoples, and I, and I also have as well. And they're humans. They're yeah. humans. We're all one. We're all family. You know, when you look at, like, the mainstream, not going to get into it right now, but all the wars and the stuff that's going on, it's like it's just so the complete opposite of what we believe in, right? Yeah. I literally heard a guy the other day saying that we are evil. Humans are evil. And a woman that is on a podcast, and she was agreeing with him because, yeah, humans are absolutely evil. <laughs> And we have to, and I was just, I was like, I was like one of my little scrolling episodes and I was like, what are you on about? Like my brain was so, like maybe if I was so lost in the matrix and on drugs then I probably would have agreed with them. But without judging them, I just actually felt sorry for them. Mm. I was like, wow, you haven't tasted the coconut. Yeah. Like you can't describe what that coconut tastes like to somebody if they've never tasted it. Mm. And what I'm talking about is this divine love, this essence, this bliss, which we've all come from but forgotten. I'm like, they clearly can't taste it. They're not there yeah and i actually felt sorry for him and i was like well if that's what's on youtube and that's what's going out to the world and i wonder why people are, are at war why people are suffering why we do leave each other behind mm. because it's like i think everybody really wants to sit the coconut sit on the beach and have a nice little swig right because it's so refreshing everybody wants to feel that divine love mm. but if you're so far away from it you're gonna act like in the ways that people are acting mm. And again, utmost compassion, right? Because we understand that they're talking from that core wound mm. of being betrayed, being hurt, and, and feeling that, yeah, and feeling that disconnection, that illusion of separation when everything is connected through, through energy, through the quantum field, quantum entanglement. Mm. Uh, I, I couldn't give a, a better ex explanation of the quantum field earlier but yeah look it up and there's books about it everything is connected we're all connected we're all one yeah yeah there's a there's a tradition in um in yoga is it the veda vedics the mm -hmm. vedic tradition yeah i read about it a long time ago and they basically like i think it was five thousand years ago they would teach their children to basically the children would go and they would all dress in cloth so there was no boys or girls there was no classes you know i remember going to a boys school and we had to wear different color ties to separate each other from different boys and it's like wow it's such constant separation from each other but anyway this vedic tradition they never had none of that the boys and girls would go to the same classes and they would meditate they would like they would focus and contemplate on the powers of nature the universe they would mm. connect and i was just like and when i read that I know it sounds a bit hippie and I'm going to let my woo-woo side out, but when I read that, it just resonates so much. There's not even a word to say, oh, I believe in that. It's just in my core. I feel it. Because it's the truth. Because it's the truth, right? There's it's like no the goose. Woo -woo no, it's just truth. Yeah. And then when you look at, like, you just put social media on for 10 minutes or watch the news for one minute and you see how separate and how far away from it that truly is. It's like... Oh, man, I think, again, this is why we do what we do, because we just want to bring people back to that love, right? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful story. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Bro, it's been amazing. Has been. It's been emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I always love chatting to you because you've just got such a lovely presence. Again, Likewise. just one tip for somebody. They've watched this. What would you say to them? What's the first thing? Would you tell them to go and meditate for five minutes? Reach out to a coach? What would you say to somebody, like, if they really wanted to go on a new journey or they're going through something? Forgive. Forgive everything that's happened to you because there's a lesson in it mm. for you to acknowledge and receive so that the universe or, the cre or creation itself 
can remove that problem or that pattern or that trauma from your life because you've received the lesson. There's no more reason for it to be there. Forgive everything that's ever happened to you. Mm. Nobody in their right, untainted, grounded, centered, conscious mind will ever hurt another human being on purpose. Forgive. No, they don't mean it. They never meant it. They were suffering also. They're so far away from that. Inside, yeah. Right? Bring the compassion, compassion and forgiveness for everything and, and all the hindrances can drop away, all the things that hold us back from our true, true nature and our joy, which is our essence. When you look at children, that's it. That's why we love looking at children. They are the reflection of our true nature. When, we chi- when we're having a chat and we get all giggly, that's sometimes how I feel when I'm with you. I feel like a kid. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I am a kid yeah. still. Yeah. Forever. This is the, the journey, getting back to that inner child. That innocence. That innocence. That openness. Mm. Yeah, we could learn so much from kids, right? Kids, animals, and nature. Huge just, teachers. Yeah, massive. Yeah. I think what I get from your talk more than anything, mate, as we just wrap it up, come to an end, is that I really love how you turned your adversity or quote-unquote darkness into such a healing gift. And then Mm. that you spread that to other people because in my experience, like, I would never change my addiction or my habits or patterns that I've been through. And it was hardcore, but it's like the light on the other side of it is so worth it, right? Mm. So I just want to, yeah, recognize you and thank you for the work that you do. And again, if anybody's listening um, and you resonate just a tiny bit or you just want a little bit of help, like click below, reach out to Dalton, find him on Instagram. I know that he would reach out to you and reply um, or reach out to us here. And we would be more than happy just to either guide you in the right direction yeah. or just talk to you about whatever it is that you offer. Because I, I, I don't think I could trust anybody more than you if I ever went through something like that. So thank you for doing the work, mate, and showing up. And yeah, and, and for helping people reframe whatever you're going through right now, if you just go through and hold on, um, I think it could be such a gift. Mm. Look at us living in Thailand, drinking coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like never in a million years did we think maybe we'd be here when we was in the darkness, right? Yeah. But what a gift. Yeah. And breathe. Breathe through it. Mm. Breathe through it. Like slow down and breathe. Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you, mate. (laughs) Love you, love Love you, mate. Namaste. Namaste, brother. (laughs) Hello, viewers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm hoping that you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoyed making it. We love this adventure we're on. We love growing this community, and we would love you to actually help us. So I've got a favor to ask you. Make sure that you subscribe below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and turn that notification button on because that actually helps us with the algorithm. In other words, it's gonna help us reach more people and spread this ripple effect. And I really appreciate your time and energy for watching any video. So if you've got any comments or questions or queries, make sure you pop them in the box below. By subscribing, you are going to be one of the first people to know when we release new content. If you really wanna take your journey and your growth to the next level, make sure you watch this next video and have an amazing day. Once again, thank you so much for your time and your energy. See you in the next video.